I took a job and sort of an ad in the newspaper that said, Secretary, light typing, no shorthand, prestige brokerage firm. And so I started out uh, what I thought would be a summer job as a secretary in a brokerage firm. And then a few years later, the Chicago Board Options Exchange was opening, and I decided I wanted to be a trader on the floor. And I gathered up all my money to buy a seat, and you had to go through an interview process. Well, at the time I was married and I was about seven months pregnant, and all these men were looking at me like, what's she gonna do on the floor? And I said, wait, this is a temporary condition. So on opening day of the options exchange, I think I was the only one who had a seat. They put me on a stool in the corner and said, you stay over there. And I was the uh, first woman trader on the floor of the Chicago Board Options Exchange. I've been riding horses since I was a little girl, and I have a beautiful Palomino stallion, so I fulfilled my childhood dream of having Trigger in the barn. It's where I get my peace of mind, just going for a ride on a beautiful morning. Every day, I try and make sure that I've done something that no one really knows about, but that changes someone's life. Are you ready to talk about money? Yeah. Are you ready to plan your retirement? Yeah. We can do that. And I'm delighted to talk about money with you, whether you're just starting out in the workforce and thinking about how can I possibly put aside a little money in that 401k every month to, oh my goodness, it's coming closer. Have I saved enough? How much money do you need to retire? We're going to help you find your own savage number and find out, more importantly, how confident you are about your own retirement plans and whether you know what you should be doing right now. So that's the whole goal of this program, and let's get started. Before we actually move into that, I want to show you a cartoon from the Wall Street Journal. It's in my new book, The Savage Number. I don't know if you can read the small print. It says, the financial strategy for my retirement should count on me still being alive. <laughs> You know, we live in an uncertain world. If we knew for sure, it would be an awful lot easier to plan. And that's why everybody's so worried about retirement, this baby boom generation, because there's so many things we don't know. I'll help to point those out to you tonight. So let me give you some basic savage truths about money first. From my last book, The Savage Truth on Money, it pays to plan while you can. And the earlier you start, and some of you are closer to retirement, but some of you who have kids who are in their 20s and just starting out in the workplace, I need to enlist you to give your kids one of the most simple and basic lessons about financial planning. Look, we can't change our own unique money mentality You've seen it, you have two kids in the same family, you give one an allowance, they squander it, the other kid hoards every penny. Same family, same environment, same genes. You have a unique money personality. Well, I boil it down to two categories. There are the spenders and the savers. And for better or for worse, they marry each other. <laughs> Right away, you've got problems. Now, you can't change anyone's money personality by the time they're grown up. You can only organize your life, plan money strategies that take the fights, the quarrels, the problems out of handling money. Let me take you to a very basic example. I want to give you the secret of financial success, which I talk about and have talked about for years. It's really simple. There are a lot of books, a lot of videos, a lot of tapes out there, but it all, all boils down to this. The secret of financial success is to make your money work for you as hard as you work for it. You know that you all work very, very hard for your money. You work long hours, you do physical labor, you do mental labor. Now it's time to put your money to work for you. And it can be a very powerful tool. 